Hello yep. Credit Review? I think so. It's just kind of like a turn your brain off, watch this, have oh, fun. Oh, nice. Yeah. With Charlie Day. Oh. You gotta love that. Charlie anyway. Day from like, it's always sunny. Yeah, and also he's uh, Benny, the spaceship guy in the Lego movie. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyways, I think All we're right. good to go. We are good to go. Okay. Well, then, uh, welcome back to Jeff and Jaish. Um, Jeff, not here once again. I hear he's going to be here in March. I will not. Also, it's the same weekend as the retreat, so I won't be there. I'll be in Vancouver. I'll be in the mountains. Yeah, at Beartooth. Yep. Austin will probably be there too, huh? I will be. Nice. Very cool. Jeff will be here. We won't be shooting. <laughs> Just the 30 minute video of Jeff alone on the couch <laughs> yeah. on like, his phone. He's like, I thought we were supposed to have a podcast today. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be great. That'd mm-hmm. be legendary. Nate can set everything up. He knows what he's doing. <laughs> we could leave it set up for him. True. Give him the keys to the house. Hey, what if Jeff wanted to house it for me while I'm gone? <laughs> <laughs> and we just great. put cameras Security everywhere and camera just like of Jeff. cut to different random Jeff moments. This is getting weird. I feel like we might creep him out. <laughs> You'll, uh, I'll never see this. <laughs> yeah. The, yeah. We don't know. I don't know what his... His interest level is in, in I his no podcast. Idea. I know he wants royalties for all the merch we're not selling. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hold on. I'm going to open the window. Okay. You guys get it started. All right. Well, um, we, I mean, Nathan's filling in. That's that's the other thing is Nathan's back at it again, filling yep. in for uh, for Jeff, Austin, your yeah, tech, buddy. and hanging out with us on the couch today. Indeed. Um, we don't have any guests. No, but no, we love but having Austin here. We do. And that's that's great. He's I the still it. small voice in all of us. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Actually, in every episode, he is the still small voice that no one sees. That's true. <laughs> so true. Now you see him. <clears throat> we were almost going to get Colin on. Yeah. And now we're just talking about him as per usual. Right. Right. I mean, he's not the subject of the episode, but right. he comes up quite often. He does come up quite often. Yeah. We have some special. We have an episode. It's going to be fun. It's called The Roast of Colin Moore, and it's going to be a good it's time. It's going to be really good. That's all I'm going to say about it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But we've been wheeling and dealing on the internet, getting some purchases made mm-hmm. in preparation, blowing Using all, all the budget we don't budget. have. <laughs> you know all those uh, funds we made off the t-shirts? I think I've made 30 bucks off t-shirts. Okay, and it was spent. Oh, it was spent oh, yeah, like right. before we even oh, made yeah. it. Sounds so, right about it. Sounds yeah. right. You know. yeah. So, um, instead, Nathan, you have an article for us. I, I do. As a person who frequents... Uh, the Philadelphia Magazine. Oh, who doesn't? Uh, <laughs> Come on, Philly. <laughs> <laughs> I discovered an article by a dear woman named Sandy Hingston called <laughs> How Millennials Killed Mayonnaise. <laughs> okay, so that's what we're going to talk about today. I'm gonna read. You, do you just have highlights or have you read this thing? I have read it, okay. but I haven't. I don't have highlights and this is seven pages long. So, so yeah, don't read the whole dang thing. Yeah, that would be the whole podcast. Actually, I think if you just sat there and read the seven pages. Right. Um, but let's see. Uh, I mean, I, I kind of, I just want to just launch into this. Okay. Yeah, I want to so hear what it's Imagine, got. imagine like that. The title is kind of off putting for the caliber of article we're about to hear. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, so it's a lot better written than the title. It's pretty presented. impressive okay. for an article about mayonnaise. So <laughs> okay. here we go. Okay. <clears throat> I write this in the dead of summer, always a bittersweet season. Why is it? We got summers off from school and for all those years, but didn't get summers off from work. But doubly depressing these days when I find myself suffering from picnic panic. The hot, <laughs> languid weather brings it brings with it a series of outdoor family events for which I, as a tribal elder, am charged with providing provisions. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> Lately, though, I've had my feet cut out from under me. For years, nay decades, my contributions to the Hingston's clan's Memorial Day and Fourth of July and Labor Day gatherings were no-brainers. I made what my mother once made. She was such a good cook that when she died prematurely, my husband and I typed up and photocopied, quaint I know, a booklet of her recipes, tried and true favorites, on which she built her formidable culinary reputation. When the holidays rolled around, I simply recreated one of her delicious dishes and toted it along. About along about a decade ago, I began to notice I was toting home as much of my offerings as I'd concocted. My contributions were being overlooked or shunned. Why should this be? Mom's extraordinary potato salad, fragrant with dill, spiced by celery seed, went untouched at the picnic table. So did her macaroni salad and her chicken salad and her deviled eggs. (laughs) When I carted home a good three pounds of painstakingly prepared Waldorf salad, (laughs) all that peeling and corning and slicing, I was forced to face facts. The family's tastes had changed. Or rather, our family had changed. Oldsters were dying off, and the young'uns taking our places in the paper plate line were different somehow. (laughs) I racked my brain for the source of this generational disconnect. And then, one holiday weekend, while surveying the condiments set out at a family burger bash, I found it. On offer were four different kinds of mustard, three ketchups, one made from, I kid you not, bananas, seven sorts of salsa, (laughs) kimchi, wasabi, relishes of every ilk and hue. What was missing, though, 
was the common foundation of all mom's picnic foods, <laughs> mayonnaise. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> so basically this article is how she noticed that kids aren't eating stuff that has mayonnaise in it. Right, and she's really upset about it. Right. So uh, let's see. <laughs> While I wasn't watching, Mayo's day had come and gone. It's too basic for con uh, contemporary tastes, pale and insipid, and not nearly exotic enough for our era of globalization. <laughs> not exotic enough. Good old mayo has become the Taylor Swift of condiments. Oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I still love T-Swift. I know. And what's wrong with Taylor Swift? I feel like she, she's she got some bangers out yeah, there, you know? like I mean, She's not bland at all. Shake it off, Taylor. Come Boy, on. <laughs> I was really into her newest album. But oh, that's neither um, here nor there. Okay. Oh, well, we're not, about, not Reputation, but 1989. Um, 89 mm -hmm. is bomb. That's her it's best album, album by far. I, I was really disappointed with the new one. I'm not going to lie that I've shamelessly played Halo while listening to 1989 on my headphones before. Halo? Isn't that a Beyonce song? No, like, I've been oh, playing, played the game. playing Halo and listening to 1989. Sorry. You're listening to two songs at the same time. <laughs> that's right. I got my iPod over here and my iPhone over here. <laughs> So, okay, here's one of my favorite ex excerpts, though. <laughs> okay. <laughs> my son, Jake. This is like a giant, you know. Yeah, we've my switched son, topics. Jake. She talks about how her, her parents arrived at Ellis Island with their pockets full of mayo. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> and, what? And, uh, and, I don't believe that one bit. <laughs> well, not really, but just their pockets stuffed with Kiglasa and chorizo and Braunschweiger. Basically, like, all this German stuff, right? Sure. And mayonnaise sure. is kind of fundamental. I didn't know chorizo was German. I don't know if it is. Seems very um, Mexican to me. But. but then then she was, yeah, just talking about, you know, everyone liked Crisco and uh, French fries and, like, plain stuff, right? Yeah. So there's a little bit of history there. But then this part, she has a big bullet point in the transitions. My son Jake, who's 25, eats mayo. He's a practical young man who works in computers and adores macaroni salad. He's a good son. <laughs> He's a good son. <laughs> what a good boy, Jake. <laughs> so here's the greatest line. I also have a daughter, period. <laughs> she was a women's and gender studies major in college. Naturally, she loathes mayonnaise. <laughs> like, Obviously. Like, <laughs> why would someone in gender and women's studies like mayonnaise? I mean, they explain that. I was floored by this because she's like naturally. The word there is incredible. And then the, also just the, the terse, he's a good son, period, because he likes mayonnaise. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. So basically... Uh, what I'm hearing is that this lady recognizes that 20-year-olds mostly don't like mayo. Right. But yeah. unless, you're, unless you're a practical human being who, yeah. like, works five days a week. <laughs> and are a and good son. <laughs> you're a good son. <laughs> uh, hold on. Let's see. Is Okay, what else we got in this article? This, oh, boy. I'm how is this a seven-page article so on mayonnaise? She goes into a lot of the What's, Gaelic she, origins of... Does she have, like, a thesis statement for this? Is there a point behind this article? Or is it just a rant about mayo? I think we'll get to that. I'm pretty sure. She mentions BuzzFeed here. Oh, Great. I love BuzzFeed. Um, that sounded real, like not genuine at all. No. <laughs> Let's see. She's talking about just pop culture hating on mayonnaise here. Okay. She says, what, you, what, but what young people really, really love is to hate on mayonnaise. <laughs> what? <laughs> that is, She's got the finger on the pulse of really, you. <laughs> you know really what I'm saying? really love this. On the weekends, we go out and we hate on mayonnaise. <laughs> yeah. Uh, back in 2013, BuzzFeed ran an article titled 24 Reasons Mayonnaise is the Devil's Condiment. <laughs> the Devil's. The writer Wait. called it the slime of Satan. Did you look up this article from BuzzFeed? Because I think we should... We I'm going to Google should. that. I'm going to Google that right now. Then just three years later, BuzzFeed ran another piece, 23 Things You'll Only Understand If You Bleeping Hate Mayo. <laughs> <laughs> just upscale I'm just gonna, journalism. I'm just going to Google BuzzFeed mayonnaise and see how yeah, many articles I should. can find. By a different author, there was no overlap. <laughs> uh, and then they're talking about Bon Appetit ran an article about how ma Big Mayo will destroy us all And I'm guessing that was satirical But she probably didn't understand that um, <laughs> The Mayo Conspiracy won the best comedy feature At the 2015 World's Independent Film Festival uh, I think she really just cherry picked That movie probably has little to nothing to do With actually hating mayonnaise But I think she just googled People who hate mayonnaise And then picked the top four mm -hmm. um, Obviously BuzzFeed came to the top there um, 
<laughs> Clearly, there's something more to this river of resentment than a miscible mixture of eggs and oil. <laughs> and ob it's obvious to me that this condiment divide can be traced to young folks' rejection of what they sneeringly consider to be a boring white food. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, Wait, hold on. Do you think 23 and Me and My Heritage and all those other DNA testing companies are flourishing because people want to find out their ancestors came from Aberdeen? No, they want to be from Marrakesh or Manchuria or Malawi. It's the same with condiments. I'm not part of the elderly mayo masses. I'm turkey and Swiss on ciabatta with tzatziki, chipotle spread, and a little basil pesto. That's who I am. That's my sandwich. That's myself. <laughs> so, so basically, she thinks we're rejecting our ancestry as boring white people by rejecting oh, mayonnaise. mayonnaise. Okay. Um, wow. On the flip side, I think you guys should discuss this in the comments as we put this up yes give you give us your thoughts on mayonnaise here's the 24 reasons mayonnaise is the devil's condiment uh oh um and here's the introduction couple paragraphs <clears throat> too long have the citizenry of this nation stayed silent in the face of an insidious nefarious power <laughs> Too long have we suffered soggy, slimy sandwiches in silence, choked down gelatinous egg salad, stood idly by while innocent fries drowned under a flood of pallid, flavorless fat goo. <laughs> That's right, I'm talking about big mayo. So I'm picturing this guy sitting there pushing up his glasses with a thesaurus on this leg. Yes. Just going to town. <laughs> and until the rest of the world is talking about it too, I will not rest. Here's a little wake up call for the mayonnaise apologists out there. I only pray that you may see the error of your ways before it's too late. Uh, in terms of, they're trying to say, stop eating mayo before it's too late. Yeah. Number one reason, it's the worst. Mayonnaise is made out of oil and uncooked egg yolks. Correct. It's, it's essentially raw, greasy eggs. I mean, yeah. So that's number it one. Um, number two, mayo is the sandwich killer. This picture is disgusting. Look at this thing. Can we somehow get that on the internet? Again? Okay, so uh, yeah, that screen, screenshot like just... that real quick and then send it to me. Okay, I'll I'll screenshot or we'll that steal it. Boy. Images courtesy yeah. of BuzzFeed. <laughs> <laughs> there don't we go. sue us, please. Don't sue us. Um, it has ruined countless tuna salads throughout history. You yeah, okay? Yes, but you could say that for anything, right? Salt mm -hmm. has ruined countless yeah. dishes. Mayo destroyed an entire generation of American dinners. <laughs> That I'd agree with, <laughs> right? Like, I mean, think about how many potluck foods yeah, just are just mostly mayo, mayo. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It makes a huge slimy mess of every situation. I don't know. Like, mm -hmm. I feel like this is kind of a satirical piece, yeah. right? Because a lot of these are incidental and have, yeah. are easily avoidable. And mm -hmm. there's incredible uses for mayo. Yeah, for instance, yes. if you put mayo on the outside of a grilled cheese before you grill it, that baby will be amazing. Hmm. Like, it's incredible. Kind of mind-blowing. Yeah. Here, here is one point, though, he makes that I think is interesting about okay. mayo. It constantly has to reassure you that it's real. Because you get, like, the things that say real mayonnaise on there instead of fake mayonnaise. Right. Like, what is in fake may Let's mayo? Let's find out. Because if it's just grease and egg, I feel like there's, there's it's really, why yeah, would it be so hard to fake? fake? Man, unless it's like that. Um, you know, there's the b debate on which is better, mayonnaise or Miracle Whip. It's oh, not right. Miracle Whip, whatever it is. Yeah, no, it's is Miracle it? Whip. Yeah. I don't like mayonnaise. Um, I'm more on this guy's side than Philly lady side. So you're rejecting your white heritage. Right, yeah. Say goodbye. Because you're from to, Aberdeen. <laughs> yeah. I am I am fun. I want that tzatziki sauce, as You are made of pesto and Swiss on that's, ciabatta. That's right. <laughs> my friend, you are a special snowflake. That's right. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, what is real mayo? <laughs> what special a dumb name, snowflake. he says. Who even knows what mayonnaise is? And then he has the Sponge or SpongeBob SquarePants gif of Patrick asking, is mayonnaise an instrument? <laughs> That's a classic, though. That is a we classic have mayonnaise line. to thank for that line. Because <laughs> his horseradish an instrument is not the same. Right. <laughs> is Miracle Whip an instrument? <laughs> One of his points, though, is just get off my pizza. That's fair. That is, yeah, don't put mayo on your pizza, bro. That's just odd. I'm trying to think of a scenario where that would be acceptable. No. Um, it's this not. website is not helping me at all. The historical background. 
What is the difference? Oh, we're going on Quora. You know what this means? Tomorrow morning, I'm going to have an email in my inbox saying, are you oh, nice. still interested in <laughs> mayonnaise? <laughs> it's, like, um, it's a matter of branding, it says. There are two major brands of mayonnaise. Whoops. Hold on. Please hold for ad. Um, Hellman's and Miracle Whip. Hellman's bills itself as real mayonnaise, while Miracle Whip is advertised as a sandwich spread or even a salad dressing. For the complicating things, I believe that Hellman's has a different branding in different parts of the U.S. and around the world. So when you are seeing something labeled as real mayonnaise, it's probably that the particular manufacturer's local branding for what it is what that particular local branding is what you would call a Hellman's mayonnaise. So really, they're the same thing. Um, yeah, the sim- it's similar to the distinction between ketchup and ketchup with a oh, C. Oh, yeah. Which you don't really see that no, these days. They're don't. the same thing, but Heinz created two versions in the 1880s, adding a more upscale version of their ketchup and calling it ketchup. So ketchup is higher end. Wait, ketchup is fancier than ketchup? I guess. Because I feel like, like if I'm at a fancy restaurant, I'm like, excuse me, sir, do you have any ketchup? Not, do you have any ketchup? Right. I think it's just because we don't hear mm-hmm. ketchup right. anymore because it's, it's so, so it, cheap it, to make ketchup. It yeah. sounds fancy now to say ketchup. I actually didn't know they were two different things. I thought I it was know just either. a different I thought, pronunciation. I thought it was just people who don't know how to say words <laughs> right. saying ketchup. I'm like, it, there's no S. Yeah. How do you... Anyway. Interesting. Yeah, I don't know. I... At the end of the day, <laughs> what we're dealing with here is an entire podcast episode about mayonnaise. <laughs> mm-hmm. But with really actually not a whole lot of debate, she, I think. She does make a compelling argument. Okay, the what's end. her compelling argument? Um, Let's hear it. She says, the saddest part is my mom's macaroni salad is banging. <laughs> I don't think she's <laughs> old enough or young enough to use that word. No, based on the way she's describing things. <laughs> Even though I just, I did before. You kids are only cheating yourselves by rejecting it. Besides, I've got good, or I've got news. That aioli that you're also fond of, I hate to break it to you, but that's just mayonnaise. That's true, actually. Aioli is very much similar. It's just a little runnier and oh, usually really? has citrus in it. Hmm. Yeah. Man, now I feel like a just just a chump. A chump because I've been like, aioli's fine. Yeah. But right. I, re- I firmly reject mayonnaise. Well, I think aioli is a little bit more runny. So if mm. you get it on a burger, it's more like you kind of. Yeah, true. Pour true, it on. True, 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 Plus, true. it usually has more herbs and citrus. That's probably in it. why it tastes good. Because, like, yeah, a little bit of aioli on like a, a burrito every now and mm-hmm. then. Yeah, and actually, yeah. I didn't know what it was until I made it myself. Oh, because I was making some like seared ahi tuna. Okay, and I was like, aioli would be great on this. And then I was like, I don't have any aioli. So you went to make some aioli. So I made some aioli, and it was great. Mm-hmm. But it was. Uh, yeah, that's all it was. It was it was kind of nerve wracking to be honest. And she's right; it is raw. I mean, the BuzzFeed article is right. It's raw eggs, really, in oil. You just take the egg yolks, you put them in some olive oil, and then you just whip it till it emulsifies, oh, really? and that's it, right? So then just, it was like, hmm. there you go. I squeezed some lemon juice in there, and I put some I put some um, thyme and some other and some basil okay. and parsley in there. Interesting. But like, it, that's what it is, you know. Yeah. And so like, it's funny how. I don't know. I mean, I guess technically the FDA will let you eat a raw egg, right? It's like FDA approved to just straight up sell eggs yeah. and what you do with them is your own business. But it is weird that like mm-hmm. that's We're, what aioli is. It's yeah. just raw eggs. So anytime you've had like, I think they have, um, where did I have it? At Wendy's, they had some like aioli really? burger. That was really good. Mm-hmm. But that was just raw eggs. I'm sure that's packed full of preservatives. Yeah. And yeah. Stuff, I feel like, like a mayonnaise. Lot of, yeah. Because mayonnaise will last forever. Right. Mm-hmm. Which is suspicious if it's actually yeah. just raw eggs. I don't know. Mm. Anyways. There you go. Leave that's... your comments about do you like mayonnaise or not, I guess. And if you want to defend it, we'd love to know your thoughts. I'm yeah. looking at you guys. There's like a helicopter taking yeah. off outside. Yeah. Mm. Also, that's I've that. noticed something interesting that's completely unrelated. If I'm sitting here on the couch with my laptop out, yeah. I'm being productive. But if I have my phone out, I'm dinking around. But I'm doing the exact same thing. It's funny how perception <laughs> is that way. Mm-hmm. But... Anyways, I guess the point of this episode is that you're a good son if you like mayonnaise, <laughs> but so, if you study gender studies in college... At least based on my survey I took today, two-thirds of people in this room are good sons. Well... Right? Because you guys like mayonnaise, right? I'm okay with it. I just okay. don't opt for it on okay. anything usually. Are you going to eat like macaroni salad? No, I don't okay. like it. Oh, yeah. You like oh, macaroni yeah. I don't it's like macaroni so good. salad either. And mostly because it's base is mayonnaise it's weirdly tangy weirdly tangy. which is so good really yeah 
mm-hmm. fan of that. Mm-hmm. Okay, so like potluck about foods, that. right? Yeah. Okay. You guys down with that type of potlucks stuff? are fun. Yes. Like, what's your favorite type of potluck food? Because I generally don't like potluck food. Okay, I'm usually going for like the bowl of what's essentially spaghetti, but they put in different noodles to make it potluck noodles. Oh, the flat ones? Yeah. Yeah. Either that or like those little rotini noodles. With but the rubber meatballs in you know, there? It's all just spaghetti, basically. I'm like, I'm going for that. Yeah, that's true. Mm-hmm. Everyone's got the spaghetti. And then every now and then you have that one college student that brings a little Caesars pizza to a potluck. Right. Which is You're like, that's amazing. what's up. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's not bad. I just, I feel like for the most part, um, potluck food is just like heavy. Yeah, mayonnaise. And there's a lot of carbs in it. And yep. so it just sits yep. heavy in yep. your stomach. Yep, yep, yep. And maybe that's the point is like, this will fill them up, true. whip that up. Or just because it's, true, true. it's like that type of food lends itself to being easy to prepare and it stays good mm-hmm. during transit. Mm-hmm. Sure. I don't know, but it's like, it's yeah, weird how it's universal usually like, that is. It's something easy to make in a crock pot. Yes. Which mm-hmm. all, all of that's heavy food. Yep. Yeah. And, that's and then it. you get that, uh, what is it? It's like, it's like Cool Whip, but Jell-O, cool but... Whip? Oh, you know what I'm talking about? The I Jello mean, salad. Yeah, that stuff throws me the heck off. Kind of weird, and you never Not know if it's that. gonna be savory or sweet because yeah. mm-hmm. it could be either one. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's suspicious. There's so many. Like, you remember the scene in the the live action Jim Carrey Grinch movie where they're stuffing all the different types of fudge oh, in his yeah. mouth? Yeah, and then that's they what get it's that, like. Like green thing in there. You know what I'm talking Not about? about you seen that movie? Mm-mm. Well, he comes down from Mount, whatever it's called, Mount. What's it called? Where Dump, does the Grinch Mount Crumpet. Dump, Dump it to Crumpet. Crumpet. That's right. Do you know the story of the Grinch? No. Oh, okay. Oh. It's a Dr. Seuss. Okay, here we go. Uh, it's a Dr. Yeah. Seuss story okay. about a grumpy green creature that lives Named on top of a mountain Over with Whoville. his dog. <laughs> and then there's this whole population of Christmas fanatics who spend literally their entire lives preparing for Christmas. Yep. The older I get, the more I can relate to the Grinch. Because <laughs> <laughs> so, he sits up there just to like get yeah. away from Christmas a little bit. Yeah, he kind of okay. just looks down at Whoville and like... Ugh. And there's no backstory in the book about why he's this way. In the movie, they say he had a bad experience as a kid uh, on Christmas. Like, someone, he was really hairy, and someone yeah. got him a razor and was making fun of him and all that. Gotcha. But then, so he sits up there, and then he decides, you know what? I'm going to steal Christmas. So he sneaks down there. He steals their gigantic Christmas tree and all of their presents. Mm-hmm. He reverse Santa Clauses them, basically. Yep. And then he takes it all up to the top of his mountain. And is planning to dump it over the mountain. But how does the book end? Um, well, it ends when he's up at the top of the mountain, but still see- hears them singing Christmas songs. Right. Mm. And his heart grew three sizes that day. Right. Because he's like, wait, maybe Christmas is more than <laughs> so just material So he got elephantitis. <laughs> he had a heart attack. He died. <laughs> in fact, in the movie, there's a little x-ray thing. You see his heart physically yeah, like, like pushing actually, out of his chest. And actually it's like, growing and breaking. You need to see a doctor, thing. my dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so then he brings it all back. And then they celebrate Christmas and at his it. house. Yeah. Oh. Um, okay. But in that movie, there's a scene at which they twist it a little bit. Where <laughs> yeah, the live action Jim Carrey, they take a lot of liberties to make the story how they want it, which is actually good because yeah. there's a lot of fun stuff they added. One of the things was before he, there's a specific character who comes up as a little girl who comes up to try to convince him to come mm-hmm. have Christmas with mm-hmm. them. So he does, and he comes down, and they make him the holiday cheermeister, which is some like esteemed thing. But because of that, he has to taste. All, All the, the fudge. homemade fudges, and they're horrific looking. Like yeah. some of them aren't even fudge consistency; it's no. like slimes and stuff. Like yeah. they're just shoving into his mouth. And some of the fudges did look real good. Like they that fudge that actually looked like fudge. I was right. like, oh, I want some of that. And so even some of the brightly colored ones, you're like, maybe yeah. that'd be kind of fruity. But he's like on this big throne, and they're carrying him around and stuffing food in his yeah. mouth, and he's just getting really full. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like <laughs> it's pretty it's awesome. funny. So all that to say, that's what potluck food is sometimes yep. to me because it's like some of it's really good, but some of it's just like, what is this weird color thing? Yeah, mm-hmm. it could be anything. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you know what I haven't noticed at potlucks, and I think for it's good that we don't see it much anymore. Is that like the the green jello with the shredded carrots in it? What is up with that? I don't that? know. I don't know why what? someone thought I should shred carrots into my jello. <laughs> it's so weird. <laughs> have you seen that before? I feel like I have, like, but I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure it's just an abomination. It is. You know, like that proverb, seven thing, or six things the Lord hates? Yeah. Seven are abomination to him. I think if there was an eighth one listed, it would be jello with jello. Shredded, shredded carrots in it. You know, the funny thing is, when I was a kid, we used to, um, my mom would always make jello, but oh, with yeah. fruit in it. Okay. Because then that you makes have... sense, because jello's fruit flavored. Right. Put some fruit in there. So she'd like, those raspberry ones, she'd yeah. throw a ton of raspberries Ooh, in it. Or very good. the green apple one, she'd yep. take pears and slice yep. them in half, put yep. them in there. Which was great because then you have she she liked it because you'd get a serving of fruit with your Jello. Sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But once when she was gone, we convinced my dad to make Jello, and we forgot 
the fruit. Forgot. And the we fruit. got a whole serving of straight jello and we were like, oh, this, this is, is so amazing. good. And now I'm like, I would like it with the fruit, please. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. the fruit was good. I don't yeah, know why I didn't good. like it. So mm-hmm. but then they yeah, they mix it up with Cool Whip or whatever yeah. to make the salad. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Did your okay, did your family on Christmas ever do jello but with like Coca-Cola? No. That sounds really Or Dr. Pepper or something. Is it good? That sounds awesome. Yeah, so it's like it's uh Did you put gelatin in the like pop? And it's then it basically into, just like a dark like red a little, jello that's still square. carbonated. Ooh, yes. Yeah. And I'm it about tastes that. like Dr. Pepper or something or cherry coke. That's I don't know. what's up. It's that pretty good. good. I really enjoyed that. Maybe we'll have a tasting episode one day and have that. We should have a Jeff and Josh potluck Ooh. where we bring all of our potluck foods. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. I feel like I feel like there's foods we need to introduce to the potluck scene in order to try to get them to stick. Okay. What right? do you think? I'm specifically thinking about what we made tonight. Because oh, it's yeah. just as easy. It mm-hmm. is. It's this like frozen bag, which I'm generally against frozen foods, but this is this amazing. Is good, this is pretty yeah. miraculous. It's like that twisty pasta. Yeah. Carrots, corn, chicken, broccoli. Broccoli and like a garlic kind mm-hmm. of creamy sauce. And then you just added yeah. some extra seasoning to it. And it was a little really alpine yummy. touch. Yeah. Buddy. You that can throw alpine touch on anything. So yeah. And that'd be so easy to do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I would eat well. a lot of that yeah. at a potluck. I think that should that yeah. should enter the scene. Maybe there's a church potluck on Sunday. Yeah. Ooh, there is. If I don't see that there. <laughs> <laughs> you may not see me there. I don't know. <laughs> oh, good point. Uh let's see. What else should what what else should we add to the potluck rotation? Um I'm trying to think, man. What would be good? I kind of just wish it was easier to just make just like lots of meats. Right. Right. You know? Like yeah. it'd be sweet to be able to have more burgers at potlucks. Yeah. Like you gotta have but someone they, they don't I, turn into rubber. You gotta have a grill master that doesn't rubberize your burgers. Right. Something um, easily transportable. Which is why meatballs are nice, I guess. Those are yeah. easily transportable in a crock pot. And they vulcanize very quickly. Mm-hmm. You know, that's the other dangerous thing is similar to potluck food is like hors d'oeuvres oh, yeah. and a fancy thing, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. You'll get so we need of bacon wrap. So we need those little mini hot dogs. Yeah, with a bacon around them. Yeah. Ooh. Okay, yeah. so yeah. anything wrapped in bacon is a major danger thing. Really? If you're eating hors d'oeuvres, because you might get a Rocky Mountain oyster. Oh. Mm. Yeah. Have you had that before? I have time? accidentally had Rocky Mountain oysters that because they were wrapped in bacon. I'm so and sorry I didn't about know that. Because so. I've been offered Rocky Mountain oysters once, but don't I, do it. It was at a branding, so I knew exactly what uh, that was. I was like 10 out of 10. And it was fresh then. Mm, super fresh. I was like, <laughs> mm, I'm Yuck. good. I yeah. don't want to. It's worse when you see them just. Yeah. Raw. Don't do that, kids. Well, <laughs> just give them a, just pop right in. Just opt out. Yeah. yeah. Just, out let's let's stop it there. <laughs> and subscribe. On the branding Rocky is Mountain fun Monster. and that's where it should end. Is yes. Like, and bacon is good. Yep. Uh, all right. There we go. Don't bring Rocky Mountain Oysters to the next pile like yeah, I go please to. Please don't. Uh, thank you all for joining us. Yeah. It's been fun to read an entire... We made a whole um, podcast episode about mayonnaise. Yep. yep. And I didn't think we could do it. But, but we did. They said it couldn't be done. <laughs> But we did it. Um, to be our top podcast. It's not. It's going straight to the bottom with the man cast. <laughs> Wait, that is one, the man cast at the it's bottom? The bottom. Yeah. And yeah. so is Truth or Spoof, which is yeah, stupid because really? I put a lot of work into that. One. Yeah, that was. Anyways, uh, my resentment aside, if you'd like to actually check this podcast out elsewhere, you could do that on Google Play or Apple Podcasts, um, or you can go to our website jeffandjosh.net. You can check out episodes there as well as our merch store, store.jeffandjosh.net, or click that little shopping cart icon. Yep. Um, I think that's all that we have. We've yep. got some new content mm-hmm. coming out for you. We just shot an episode of Cooking with Colin. Mm-hmm. Cool. That will be out soon. Uh, not by the time you see this, but no. soon. Uh, that was good. I only was sick for three days after that. Really? You yeah, got I was legitimately it? sick. Oh, Colin. So... It That's better fine. be worth it. If this, <laughs> this is another flop. I'm done. Uh, but yeah, Colin is generally successful. <laughs> so that was fun. Thanks for joining me. Yeah. And uh, we'll I like that he's enjoying me like you're the host of this show. I, well, I was reading an article. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining me, you two guests. <laughs> <laughs> All right. His name isn't even anywhere on. <laughs>